So I find this little piece of map. It's interesting. Okay, so we've got the four seas, right? I'm assuming this is a parallel to Central America. It's the only part of the world I think that is like this, where you've got like you know, different oceans, land mass, and in a way in between. Although I suspect this is a natural canal rather than a built canal, like the Panama Canal was built, you know. But and I think he said the the current. Let me play this for. I think he said the current goes from left to right. Do the red line continent that runs, and he's talking about this. Is, the green line is the current. The ocean current in the Grand Line, which extends from east to west. Okay, right. Right, so... The Grand Line is... Because, you know, it's, it's an arbitrary thing, right? It's to, it, the Grand Line is like something that's on the map. It's like, you know, the um, the equator, essentially. It's just, uh, I'm assuming the equator is a parallel to the Grand Line, right? I mean, if you're out there sailing in the ocean, there is no big, like, thing that, oh, here we are at the equator, this is where the monsters are. Like, not that there's monsters, but, you know, I'd say, like, when you cross the equator, they used to have a ritual. I've, I don't remember what it was. Dad said that they have a ritual when you, when the Navy ship crosses the equator. And there's also, there's another ritual when they cross the international date line. When they go from Monday back to Sunday or something, or, or do they go ahead? I, I guess it's depending on what direction you're going, right? But there's a ritual. I don't remember what it is. But whatever it is, it's like, you know, they know that because they have computers, they have maps, they have navigation. There's no line there, right? So, like, this is an arbitrary line. But it, it does make me think, okay, if we're going to put some kind of, like, you know, physics explanation to this, that maybe the equator, the equator is where the planet spins the fastest. So, you know, like, that's why you want to have um, spaceships take off as close to the equator as possible. If you got a spaceship right on the equator to take off, that's the maximum velocity that the Earth is spinning the fastest at the equator. So the, there could be a real world connection like this. This is planet is bigger. Would it be faster? Would it be spinning faster or slower if it's bigger? Probably spinning slower. But still, this the maximum spinach would be at the equator of this planet. And so maybe the monsters are attracted to that for some reason. You can, you can at least headcanon something there, right? Like, there's not going to be real-world explanations for any of this crap. But I'm saying if you wanted to, if you wanted to headcanon fan fiction some of this stuff, you could say there could be a reason why they gravitate to the Grand Line. One reason. There may be other reasons. There could be an in-story reason. But the out-of-story reason is I'm going to assume the Grand Line is exactly at the equator. And then you could be, and that would be, that would even explain the current, wouldn't it? Currents are caused by a lot of things. Like, do they have a moon or, or multiple moons? We haven't seen a moon in the sky, have we? Moons affect currents. Moons, the moons affect a lot of things, actually. So, they people think that we may not have developed life on Earth if we didn't have a moon. That could be why we're alone in the universe. Like, you have to have all the other properties for life to exist, but then also have a moon. How rare is that? That's going to be way more rare than just planets that are in the Goldilocks zone, right? So, uh, that's just... I'm actually going to... I don't think this is a spoiler. Tell me if you've ever seen a moon in the sky on any of these episodes. Because that's something I'm actually curious about. I'm curious about everything, but I'm curious about this. And I don't think that's going to be a spoiler. They're never going to go to the moon, right? The moon's never going to be the plot. Just tell me if you've ever seen that, because that's actually interesting. Or well, more than one moon, you know? We assume they only have one sun. This isn't Star Wars, right? So Anyway, I can go down this rabbit hole forever. I just thought that this little map was it. Anytime we get a little map, I'm probably going to pause and look at it. You may not always see it if there's nothing interesting about it, but this time I had a little something to say. I like the red line continent as well. But it's not one continent. You can't call it a red line continent with red on one side and line on the other if you have ocean in between, can you? It's not a continent. It's two different things. It's North America and South America. That's even attached by land, and they call it two different continents. It's not just called, a, it's called the Americas, but that's collectively two different continents. You've got North America is one continent, South America is another continent. This wouldn't actually be a red line continent if it's cut off in the middle. So that tells me maybe something cut it off. It was called the red line continent, and then there was a space put in between. Magic, monster, earthquake. Maybe they actually put a canal there. Something happened after it was named. That's uh, some more head cannon for me. Till proven otherwise. But yeah, like I said, I could go down this rabbit hole forever. So let's just go and get started. All right, you know where we are? We're going on one. Three, two, one. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Get a strap for your hat, dude. Just saying. <laughs> it's been, what, 22 years, right? I guess not, not much would have changed. A few buildings, maybe. Meanwhile, they're all coming for that ass at the same time. Three different factions. Because I don't think... She, she traveled with Buggy, but that doesn't mean she's with Buggy. Because I don't think she is. Tashi. Tashi. Okay. I can do... I can pronounce Tashi. There was like a lot of extra letters and stuff in there that was going to throw me. And did somebody tell me the person who voices Luffy is, uh, first of all, a woman, but also really old? That's not good. In her 60s, I think. We need to wrap this up before she kicks it. Just say it. Because the voiceover is great. Stay mad. No. <laughs> I'm hanging out. Well, then you should have had a guard up here. Yeah. <laughs> Are you judging me? Oh, wow. Damn. Okay, she's got a few some skills, don't she? He is a small fry, isn't he? Long time no see, huh? Who the hell are you? Don't tell me that's his mom. I guess everybody's an idiot. Even the women trying to hit that. Look at that. How is your voice carrying this far up here? Really? Who the hell are you? Maybe I hit on you. Look at him sweating. Passionate fist? The hell is she talking about? Wait, is that that? That ain't her. That first pirate woman? What the hell? What the hell is happening? First of all, who are you? And second of all, is she trying to hit that? She's not that first pirate he fought, is she? This is magic. I like what they're doing with the, the cheesecloth over the, the filter over the, the animation. <laughs> no, who are you? Shooter ass. I like her big club, by the way. <laughs> You're under arrest for harming the police captain. <laughs> Look at it. She's got the magic beauty. This is this is her devil fruit, fruit ability. <laughs> it's not a problem. Do your damn job. Are you getting a paycheck or not? Incompetence. <laughs> terrorism. All of a sudden we got terrorism up in here. <laughs> I am so effing confused. Which we're, we're supposed to be, of course, right? Yeah. The hell are you doing? Flashily sorry. God, I want it. I just, I cannot tell you how much I can't stand him. Alvida. Who the hell is Alvida? That is her. The hell? I, I, I just can't believe it. No, look, man. Look, you, you can't be looking completely effing different and then say we're crazy. Oh. Smooth, smooth fruit. That's why they're talking about beautiful skin. Really, that's actually her. Holy crap. Wow. I'm going to have to go back and look at that her episode again. Because I don't... All I remember is she's kind of an a-hole, right? 
But I don't really remember. That was like the first and second episode. I don't remember much about her. I didn't think her... I didn't see her being very smart either. Yeah. <laughs> so two old enemies have teamed up. I really like this a lot, by the way. This is really good. This is your past. Come back to haunt you. One of them's annoying and one of them's actually really cool. <laughs> I didn't say he wasn't funny. <laughs> Why are you telling me this story? Boggy? Yeah, I'm going to start calling him Boggy. Buffoon. Yeah, that's it. That's even better. Buffoony. <laughs> he don't even remember you. That was just Tuesday for me. You've been obsessed with this for months. For me, it was just Tuesday. <laughs> Why are we scared of this? We've had far worse pirates come here. <laughs> yeah, you're irrelevant, man. Uh oh. Who is this? Right, hey, they're all coming back. Several hundred billion servants. I somehow doubt your numbers. He yeah, actually just wants to kill him. That's a little dark, dude. I guess you can't handle like that kind of embarrassment. Have to scratch him out of this world. Hey, man, he would like that, though. He seems to be very into this. Oh, it's now an execution ain't cool, huh? Is that what you're saying? Also, it doesn't look like he, he can stretch, but he can't flatten his head to pull out, right? So that's interesting. He can't, like, change the, the size of his head. What are you, a uh, meteorologist all of a sudden? Like, what is happening? It's a very, it's a sentient storm. It's very specific. Hey, man, can we get back to the ship? Yeah, it sounds like a you problem. Well, not to us. Let's get back to the ship. This is some good eating. Although, with this storm, maybe the ship's not a safe place, if you think about it. Even in port, ships can be more damaged in port during a storm than they can in the open ocean. Get smashed against the pier, right? We he ain't even showed up yet. We already have all this drama. <laughs> Iron Club Alveda. Where do they get all these cool nicknames? <laughs> this will not stand. Yeah, it's almost like I'm incompetent. <laughs> Uh, let's take the rest of the day off. He's got to play it. I like it. Why are we still using swords if guns are so common? Uh-oh. Yeah, I don't think... Uh, not even one, huh? Um, I don't think a, the, the ship is actually a safe place. Storm is brewing. <laughs> Good thing we got the news channel on. He is an idiot. <laughs> we went through all that trouble, an entire episode devoted to getting this damn fish and we're not going to eat it. He's going to drag it all over the nasty ground. You ever been in a really populated city? You ever look at the ground, like in the city square, like, you know, this isn't the level of San Francisco, I'm just like, but they're like spit, crap, literally, piss. God knows what other fluids are all over the sidewalk, man. You do not want to be dragging food across it. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, let's let's uh stop and evaluate the aesthetics of his appearance rather than what's actually happening. He does have a fire in the belly. He has a fire in the belly some of these other idiots don't have. Yeah. He's just another pirate. I might have let him go if he wasn't just another pirate. 
Let them kill off each other first. If you have to say you're in command, then you're not in command. They don't respect you. <laughs> That's, yeah, he's doing what I was saying. He's, let them, yeah, let them trim down each other's numbers and then we'll come in. What? It's a very aggressive storm, by the way. <laughs> I will say this. The voiceover actor for Buggy is excellent. He's very good. Especially the laugh. Like, he really, he delivers. In another voiceover actor's hands, this character would be tedious. But you want the voiceover actor to have fun, right? Like, with this kind of character. <laughs> this is my first time seeing that. <laughs> oh, now you, you can't. Now you care, huh? What do you mean, stop joking? This is, like I said, he's like he's not, he's not quite in our world, man. So seeing somebody else die, being executed is cool, huh? Oh, this is my first time seeing execution. Great! But if it's you, stop joking. Right? Like, he's just not quite connecting, is he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, she is a meteorologist. She's talking about cumulus clouds. No ordinary pie. Well, well, you know, seafaring people would know a lot about it, I guess. I shouldn't make fun. They need to know about the weather. It's the only thing uh, seafaring people are actually afraid of is storms. <laughs> hey, man. He's running pretty good for carrying a you know five thousand pound fish. Well, maybe that's why you don't fly the Jolly Roger when you're in port, right? Then it'll just look like a merchant ship. Yeah. <laughs> How is the lion processing all this? He's a simple man. Yep. Is that the... That rumbling noise, is that the, supposed to be the lion? Look, even the ship is sweating. That's not good. <laughs> it is. The lion is doing the rumbling noises. Okay. ha <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, he doesn't look too happy, man. I mean, it does matter, though. Famous last words can really, you know, stand out. Yeah, these are good last words. Very good. Not as good as Gold Rogers, but pretty very good. How dare he? In this standpoint, this is where this is his coronation, I just realized. He's not gonna actually become the king of the pirates, but this is the day the first day he starts to become the king of the pirates, right? It's like the it's the beginning of the beginning. Officially. I know it's episode fifty two, but like officially. Wait, how can you be king of the pirates if you need your ass saved? <laughs> I, I don't think there's a limit. <laughs> See, this is a Sanji I like. Don't be scared now. You better run. <laughs> That's your next job. <laughs> Some of the hats that his minions have are really cool. 
you know, these are sharp blades, so you guys are actually dying, you know. Meanwhile, you're just getting, you know, skull fractures with the, the kicks. Not even Zoro, huh? Maybe if you stop bumping your gums and actually slash your sword down, we can get going on this, right? This is on him if you don't kill him. Yeah, that's a good plan, actually. Uh, we're always ready, sir. It's one of my favorite lines from Stargate SG-1. Prepare to fire. Uh, just so you know, sir, I'm always prepared to fire. <laughs> I just have to press this one button. <laughs> He's out of his damn mind. He's about to be out of his mind, literally, when he cuts when he gets his head cut off. Not that I believe it. You know. uh oh, I mean something will happen, right? Lightning strike. We we'll go with that. That's right. God is mad. What do we pray to in this world? I'm curious. Like, what is God in this world? <laughs> Whatever God is, I think uh, Buggy's about to go meet him. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Anybody else want to step up? We got barbecued clown over here. <laughs> That's cool. I like this. Blue fire. That's really cool. Uh-oh. What about his hat? <laughs> Nobody better touch it either, except for me. <laughs> All right. I'm glad it worked out. <laughs> I don't know if we should be celebrating a Deuce like Machina, but you know. <laughs> Let's get the hell out of here. Huh. That was weird. I don't know. I don't think they brought enough. <laughs> it is. It's gotten very crazy. Pick him up by scruff his neck. Get your ass out of here. Let's go. It's no time to be excited. That's pretty much the entire show. <laughs> yeah, you care about that, don't you? Yeah, you got to speak his language. You got to say something he cares about, so then he'll come with you. <laughs> That's right, get wrecked. Yeah, you should have never stepped up. <laughs> I think he's just very naive. He didn't seem to mind too much, did he? I see the parallel to the draw, and I didn't really pick up on that. Thank you for explaining the subtext. I think it's for a different reason, though. Gold Roger is smiling for his reason. Luffy was smiling for his reason. Yep. He's either very brave or very stupid. <laughs> yep. This is a coronation. That's what I said before. People, are, the first person who's not Luffy's friend to believe that Luffy might actually be king of the pirates, that's your coronation. This is the moment. Right here. The first person who's not a friend of his, who's not kissing his ass, believes it'll happen. Even if he doesn't say it out loud, he believes it. It could happen. To even entertain the possibility, right? That's officially your coronation. Yep. It's like the weather is working against us. They'll be destroyed in the Grand Line. Just let that happen. Let nature take its course. Literally. Yep. 
Yeah, it's like God himself, whatever the hell it is we pray to is working with him. <laughs> but F heaven. <laughs> okay. I was wondering, I thought he might be, you know, wuss out. I don't think so. There's a, some kind of a weather ma magician. That's what, what I'm getting here. Yeah, look at him. He's a weather magician, ain't he? That's what's happening here. Most of us really don't know when that moment is, do we? The first person who ever believed, who, who like, you know, because here's the thing, like your family members, they're biased. Dad read my writing when I was 15 years old and said it was good, but I didn't believe him because he's my dad. When I look back later, when I'm 25 and I read what I wrote at 15, that, that was god-awful. It was effing awful. It was horrible. He said it was good. So you can't trust him. Like, when I was 25, I never let him read my stuff because I couldn't trust his word because he was biased, right? You need actual, honest feedback if you're going to get better. Which, I, you know, I don't blame him. Like, look, he loves me. Like, I don't blame him. But he's not the person you go to for feedback. So what, I, so what I'm saying is the first person outside of your circle, unbiased, who isn't your friend, who doesn't love you, who's not kissing your ass, doesn't want something from you, that first unbiased opinion, that first person who believes that what you're saying, you, what your dream is, because this show's all about dreams. This show is about dreams. Every single character in the show has a dream. That's why the, the first thing when he creates a new character, I bet the very first thing he says, he has a dream. What is his dream? George R. R. Martin, when he keeps, he says every character has one secret. Maybe it's like, you know, they used to have a kid. They don't anymore. They used to be married. They used to be a different person. You know, they used to be a pirate. They used to be a soldier. Like, you know, they used to be a re rebel. Whatever it is, every character has one secret. So that may, that's how you drive the story. Sometimes their secrets are revealed. Sometimes they're not. He doesn't reveal every character's secret, but every character has a secret. This writer, every character has a dream. That's what I think that I really believe when he creates a character, they have a dream. You know, Buggy had a dream before he met Luffy. Now his dream is to kill Luffy, right? Uh, um, Alvidia, whatever her name is, she had a dream before we met her. And, you know, his dreams can change too, right? But who knows what her dream was before he, she met Luffy. But now her dream is either punish him or get with him. It sounds like she might want to get with him. Who knows, right? Every character has a dream. The first person to believe that your dream is possible. Most of us never know who that. I don't know who the first person was who believed I could be a good writer outside of my circle because they didn't tell me, or I don't remember. I don't remember who that first person was. I still remember the, the day I did my first, uh, I held my first auditions, and I couldn't pay very much. It was like $50. And there were actual established actors with good credits who wanted to work on my project because they liked the, the script. That was the first time I felt like I could actually make it make it in the filmmaking industry because professionals who could pick other projects who weren't being paid it wasn't like i was offering a million dollars so they're doing it for the money they actually believed i was good right see that's the kind of affirmation you just can't get anywhere else when people put their money their, their valuable time and their money on the line like they're refusing more money for other projects but because like when you schedule a day you can't take any other projects to that point so you're costing yourself money potentially when you're willing to take that risk just because you like the writing, then that's the first time you realize, wow, maybe I can actually do something. Because here's the thing, money talks, BS walks. So I've gotten an affirmation hundreds, thousands of times in the 15 years I was a filmmaker that I'm a good writer. I don't know what else I am. You know, like I said, I was never a good husband. I was never a good businessman. I wasn't a good architect, you know. I haven't been very good at life just in general. Like, I'm not good at very much, right? But one thing I know I'm good at is I know I'm a good writer. Because I had that affirmed thousands of times by thousands of people over 15 years. Like, that's the one thing I do know I can put my head on. Like, there were people in Hollywood who had, had no reason to give me the time of day who gave me the time of day because they like they like my writing. So, like, I'll take that to my grave. Nobody can convince me otherwise. I know I'm a good writer. 
That's the thing. And that's the thing also about, I guess, you know, I know that I'm a good reactor too because people are putting their money, they're they're giving me money to see my Patreon, right? Like they're, they're actually forking over money. That's when you know you're good at something, when people give up money that they possess, give it to you. So I guess I know I'm a good reactor too because like I said, money talks, BS walks. That's it. That's, you know, that is the bottom line. If you make some something, whether it be like a, you paint shoes or you draw a portrait or picture or you make bracelets or you make phone cases, whatever it is, whatever it is you make, if somebody gives you money for it, you are good at that. Bottom line, period. It doesn't matter what it is. That's money talks BS walks. So you should always know you take that to your grave. You know you're good if somebody will give you money for it or if they'll pay you to do it. Like, you may not think you're a good waitress or good at McDonald's or whatever. They are paying you to do it. Yes, they need people. But they, they don't, you know, they, there was a level of incompetence where they will fire your ass and find somebody else. So you're, you're at least, maybe you're not proud that you're good at it, but you are good at it because they're paying you money for it. Like, that's just, I know I'm on a tangent here, but I'm just saying, you can take that to your grave. Never doubt yourself if people are paying you money for it. Even if you see people are bad at it and they're getting paid for it. Like, you don't know the full story. I guess there are cases where it's like, you know, uh, nepotism or something. Let's not go down that rabbit hole. Generally speaking, if you're getting paid for it and you know whether you're a Nepo baby or not, like, so, like, you know, maybe other people, but you know, if you're being paid for it, you're good. So that's what, but what I really like about this, though, is that moment. It's never thought about that, but the moment the first person believes in you, believes that your dream is possible. That's the point of all this. When was that? When and how did that happen? I find that very interesting. Like, this is the moment. Somebody who's not kissing Luffy's ass or doesn't like him. They're not part of his team. They have no reason. They have no reason. You know, there's no biased reason. They're completely unbiased. Captain Smoker is the first person to believe it's actually possible. That he can be King of the Pirates. I don't even believe it. I don't believe he can be. Like, I'm just here to flat out tell you. I don't think he can be the King of the Pirates. I think he's going to get to a point where that's not what he wants. Life will kick him in the balls. And he'll realize that what he wants is not actually what he wants. So I think he's going to walk easier and turn his back on his dream at some point. So even I don't believe he'll be king of the pirates, but that doesn't matter. Captain Smoker believes it's possible. That's a big moment. That's a big moment. It's got me thinking about, like, the first people to believe in my dream. So, like, I really like that. That's, man, this show is deep, man.